Um, I was supposed to come here and talk about uh, my research, but it's, it's not what I'm doing because I'm not doing this research, I'm just uh, the boss of the researcher, and it is uh, Christine Leidler, who is um, doing the studies of polar bears. She is uh, based on the University of Seattle and works also for the Greenland Institute of, of Natural Resources. And I am her, her Greenland boss. And she does this uh, tagging of polar bears, um, putting the satellite senders on the polar bears, and then this is a tattooing machine to put a tattoo on the, on the lip of the animals. And um, I do help her to get the money for the for the research and to write the to comment on the on the reporting. And sometimes I get to join in the fieldwork, but then um, it's not every time I do it. And when I do it, of course, I take all the pictures I can. And I was supposed to talk about my pictures here, and uh, I start talking about this one, which is the one I like the most. But before that, I should give a little bit of the background of how, was, how I took that picture. And it's, um, it's a picture I'm very happy about because it's uh, the only time I got to sit on the good place of the helicopter. The helicopter has uh, two good places in the front where the helicopter pilots and the principal investigators sit and they have a good overview. They can see where the polarers are. Then the next best place is just behind it. The pilot, this is the pilot, and this is the place that is used to open the window to shoot the polarbears. That's usually Peter Halen or Carter Isaacson that sit there. And of course, this is great because they can have a clear view of the, of the polar bear on the side of the pilot, and they don't have this uh, polarized window you have when you sit on the, on the bad seat, which is the bad seat is in the back left where I usually sit. You can see even when you take the um, photographs that is close and should be sharp. It's, it's a little bit unsharp, like uh, you cannot really see the details. But uh, this particular polar bear was, um, we were following the polar bear tracks on the snow, and then the tracks disappeared into the water, the polar bear swam, and then there was an area of uh, thin, thin new ice, and in the ice were these holes about the size of a polar bear head about every 50 meters heading in the direction where there was fast ice and there was some seals on a hole so that the bear was making its way underwater and breaking through the ice. Mm -hmm. And when we were looking for it, suddenly it just broke through the ice, saw the helicopter and, and tried to run away. But because there was thin ice, he could not just run, so he kind of crawled on his, on his belly and, and uh, moving with the two, two front feet. And then we, we left him because we, we we could not tag it in there because it was too dangerous. The polar bear could jump into the water and, and roam. So, back to the good picture. Um, one day we were out in the field and the helicopter pilot learned that there was a storm coming. So we needed to go back to our base in East Greenland in Kumut. So we were not going to tag more polar bears, but we would uh, fly by the glacier in several leaf fields to check the area, see if we could, we could work that again. But because we will not uh, going to be working, we'll just a quick, a quick flyby. So I convinced Peter to give me the seat, so I sat side by the, in the good window. But I knew I could open the window to saw a polar bear, so I was so... And I knew it was my only chance to take a picture like this, so, so I was so ready. I had a, the camera ready, the right lens, the, all the settings, and the whole thing that was the polar And I was uh, really trying to make it happen with all my will. <laughs> and just when we were about to leave the fjord, the, the, the ice, the, the place in front, I saw this track of a, of a young polar, one of these two, who follows to the, I, yeah, I guess this is the mother, to the mother, and who saw us and run away. So and we had a, a helicopter pass, and I could, uh, I, could shot, I had this one chance, and I remember I was trying to get the shadow complete. And, and uh, that's the history of this picture. And later on, I had kind of mixed feelings about it, because it's a, it's a, 
it doesn't show the polar bears in their natural behavior. These are actually polar bears running away from the helicopter, which is a, a, a bad thing. We, we are disturbing them. But anyway, we flew back to our, our, um, our base, and when the storm passed, we came back to the same place, and we find the same, probably the same animals, our mother with two cubs. And then uh, Peter got to shoot them with a tranquilizer. And this is, uh, we had then about half an hour to work with them before they wake up. You see the mother hasn't quite uh, fallen asleep yet, but uh, we start working just as soon as we can. Um, it's not like in the movies when uh, you'll be, you are shot with a tranquilizer and fall asleep. The person is actually run around for about five minutes and then they fall asleep. So we have to shoot them, park the helicopter and wait, and then come to them and, and work as quickly as possible. And then it's a lot of uh, samples that need to be taken while the polar bears are sitting. I, I um, the blood, fat, hair, a bit of their nails. If the females, we take the milk out. Um, my job was to take a feces sample, like stick a uh, stick a little pad into the ass of the polar bear and take some sample of, it, of their poo. And uh, we, we weigh them with this machine that is similar to the one that Eva was showing, but we can actually transport it. And you may wonder why do we want to subject these uh, poor polar bears to so much uh, handling? And it's because, uh, of course, we need to learn some about them. This map is a map of the Arctic, and every square is a polar bear population. And Greenland has this uh, Ken Basin, Baffin Bay, Davis Strait, and East Greenland. And we know a lot about the polar bears in, in West Greenland, and also in Canada and Alaska, and in the Barents Sea. But we know very little about the polar bears in East Greenland. And of course, uh, the polar bears are hunted in, in, in Greenland. We have a quota with um, 196 polar bears, I think it was, uh, polar bears. But we, we know nearly nothing about the Yeah, about the polar bears in East Greenland. We don't know how, how many polar bears are there. We don't even know if it's uh, one population or two or more. We don't know if the catch is sustainable. We don't have any advice for, for East Greenland. And uh, we don't know how the, the climate change is affecting this particular population. So to, to get the answers to these questions, we had an uh, we have set a study program for East Greenland, and we are using uh, biological samples taken uh, by the hunters. Since uh, we have actually registered from the 1980s, and nowadays, since 2011, every hunter has to send a, a little piece of skin uh, from from every bird they catch and a tooth, so we can use to to look at genetics and age determination. In 2015, we started doing an interview study to find out the, all the knowledge we could get from, from polar bear hunters. And since 15, we have been doing this satellite tracking, which is showing you pictures about. And it's a, East Milan is enormous, so, so we, we are using like a little bit every year. We were in 2015, 16, and 17 in Southeast Greenland. And uh, let me show you. 15, 16, and 17 in Southeast Greenland, 18 in, in around the uh, Danmark's Haven, 19 in Station North, and the plan was to go in 2020 in this part, which has postponed because of COVID, to next year. And then um, when we have taken all the and we have inform the satellite will tell us where the polar bears are moving, and then we will be able to plan an aerial survey. So we started with the uh, interview study. And one of the first things we did with the answers was to uh, get the draw the maps from the hunters and, and we kind of use them to find the areas where to look for polar bears. So, so, so we could, uh, of course, find the polar bears where the hunters told us uh, they were and we could do the, the satellite tagging. 
We also published the results of this interview in a scientific paper about the traditional knowledge about polar bears in East Greenland. I'm not going to tell all the results of this uh, paper, but uh, one of the things we were very lucky is that it's an other paper from 1999 where the hunters foretold, like, this is Tassilac, the Topotomy, and in Tassilac, the green areas are where the hunters used to take polar bears in the 1990s. And this purple is where they are now, which is not, not very different in, in Tassilac. In Tohortome, it is an enormous difference. The green areas is where they used to hunt the polar bears in the 90s. There were these very, very long trips. The purple area is where they hunt the polar bears now. That's, that's an enormous change. Um, the results of the satellite tracking, they are still, uh, we are still waiting for them, so I hope that uh, Christine Leider can come into the next uh, Science Week and tell about it because we have, she's finding some really amazing things. Um, and I can show the last three slides, I can tell what we actually did find in uh, West Greenland, because uh, before studying the polar bears in East Greenland, we had been using a lot of years in West Greenland. And we also have an early study from the 1990s where polar bears, these are the movements of polar bears with satellite uh, tags in the 1990s. And it was clear there were like different populations. These are the Baffin Bay, no, these are the Davis Strait polar bears, the Baffin Bay, and the Cane Basin. And from 90, 2009 to 2013, we also tagged about 100 polar bears in the Baffin Bay and Cane Basin. So we could compare the movements of polar bears in these two, two periods of time. And uh, for the Cane Basin, that's uh, the part uh, all the way north, uh, between Hanak and Ellesmere Island. We found that the polar bears are doing uh, quite well. There are more polar bears now than there were 20 years ago. The area is changing from having a kind of multi, multi year sea ice, which is very thick, where the, the seals are not doing so well, to having a thin, thinner year sea ice, which is uh, good for them. Seals and the production, and if the seals are happy, the polar bears are happy. And, and then, so that's a good place to go, a polar bear. However, this is a very small population, so that's then. Uh, if we move to Baffin Bay, which is a much bigger area further south, we found there are enough polar bears, but 2,800 is enough to, to have a, a sustainable hunt. The biological advice is about 160 polar bears could be taken any year, every year, and then Canada and Greenland decided to share it 50 50. So it's, 80 polar bears for Canada and 80 for Greenland. But there was a long list of um, effects of climate change that some of these polar bears are, are not, not, not as happy as in the north. They, they have moved in a smaller area, they are further north, they are more isolated from the neighboring populations. They don't have any sea ice during summer, they don't have to wait the whole summer on land before they can. Uh, go up in the ice and eat. Um, there's more often you have them swimming 100 kilometers to get to, to, to land. They have less, in the, less time in the maternity tents. They are having the maternity tents higher up. They are thinner. They are not having as many calves as earlier. And that was my...